Guys, can I tell you the truth about something? And this is only gonna make sense to the people who watched the series of when that kid coerced his way into my house, right? I literally, and honestly, I still do believe now that I've been sober for like a week and I'm back into my like normal crazy Gabby Hanna state, I really believed that that kid was sent to me as a test because he was acting like a fucking robot. Like the way that words were coming out of his mouth were not real. And the way he was moving was not real. And when I really was like, this kid's a motherfucking robot was when he asked me for a glass of water and I gave him a glass of water. And then he said, you should have some water too. And I was like, okay, I'll have some water. So then I pulled out a glass to pour my water. And then he took his glass and he was like, here, have some of mine. And the way he did it mimicked the way they do the sacrament in church where they like pour the wine into like another cup or whatever. And I was like, this is literally a robot. And then the girl who showed up with scars on her arms, I thought at that point the world had ended. There were three different times that I thought the world ended in that week. I'm dead fucking serious. So I had just thought that the world ended again and I wasn't sure. So then this girl is crying and she's showing me her scars and shit. I thought that she was a ghost who had showed up and it was now my job. <laughs> It was now my job as being on this other side of reality to usher lost souls to the other side, like a psychic medium. So this girl shows up who has clearly cut herself to fuck, right? And I'm like, oh my God. So is this a ghost who in her real life killed herself so she wasn't passed on to the other side? She's now at my doorstep at the end of the world. <laughs> like, does she not know she's dead? Really, that's where my mind was at. And that's how fucking confusing everything was. And that's why I was kind to her because I thought I had to usher her into heaven. Ooh, so let me describe who was here. So when that girl, Caitlin, showed up and she was like pretending to be ghosted and like needed my help or whatever, at the same exact time, literally moments later, somebody else knocks on my door and I'm like, hello, who is it? And he was like, I'm not gonna say his name, but he was like, hey, I just came, I drove an hour and a half, I found your TikTok yesterday, I saw it, the way everybody was treating you and I just wanted to come and see if you needed you know, support, I wanted to give you a hug. Um, do you want me to chill in your backyard? I have a violin, I have a bass, I have two dogs. And I was like, okay, sure. This is like the most bizarre fucking timing in the world. So now she comes out in her bikini, he's sitting in the backyard and she's a completely different bitch now. Like little miss, I'm a vet tech and I'm so sad and I've been cutting myself my whole life because everybody's so cruel to me as she's literally exploiting and manipulating me, right? So now this guy's here and I can tell by the situation that she's like different. So then she starts clearing her throat. That's a whole different thing. I'll come back to that. But he was just like a person who I was actually really glad showed up because when the cops came in again and broke into my fucking back gate and you know, they were here for wellness checks or whatever, but at this point it's literally traumatizing because the cops, excuse me, have been showing up at this point for a full month. That's what people don't understand. Like this wasn't something that was like all of a sudden, like the cops have been showing up for a month and I keep telling them, hey, I'm fine. Like whatever. So he was just a stranger who literally slept in my backyard and I was okay with it. Because when those two cops came in again and those loud ass fucking dogs were there and there was a man in my backyard, I felt safer. He slept in my backyard, literally, on the fucking ground. My life was really fucked up last week. <laughs> I really didn't feel like manic. A uh, hypomanic, probably. I'm always in either a hypomanic, depressive, or stable mood as a bipolar two person. But the mania started when people were calling me manic and calling cops when I was just doing poetry. Like there was this one poem I did where I was like, he sitteth on the right, something about the right. And then, oh wait, he left the prodigal son, oh right. And then I like fell to the floor. And everybody's like, she's crazy, she's crazy. But it's literally performance art. She sitteth on the right. Like that was fucking, first of all, really clever word whatever i'm about to get naked and jump in my pool i wish that i had the comment but i saw somebody comment daddy's ruby baby girl or whatever i want to say as well that while i was manic i did actually believe that everything was happening as a part of the simulation i actually still do believe that by the way i still believe in divine intervention and the matrix and the simulation and aliens and bots like i believe in all of this stuff too it's just about how you express yourself to the rest of the world and where you can ground yourself back in reality i was not grounded 
with my root chakra. But when I did that, and when I did the like, just in the nick of time, huh? And I did the daddy's baby Ruby girl, I that part is performing. Yes, manic, but also artist. It can be both. Like people can be two things at one time. I keep saying I'm done for the day. And then I remember another piece of the story that I have to tell you. So one thing that kept happening was my phone was being blown up by texts from people who I haven't talked to in years, haven't seen in years, didn't really have much of a relationship with in the first place. And they were just messages of like, hey, I just want you to know if you ever need anything, like I'm here, I'm thinking about you. So I assume that they know what's going on, right? So I would, I would respond to them as if they knew what was going on. And they'd be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And then this one guy, he used to work out at my gym like a couple years ago. He moved a while ago. I would just see him at the gym. We didn't really have a personal relationship, right? He sends me this really long message saying like, I'm always here for you. If you ever need anything, like don't let people make you feel a certain type of way. Da, 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 da. So again, I assume he has to know what's going on, right? So then the next day he texts me and he goes, holy shit, I just Googled you. I had no idea that any of this was going on. I knew my intuition was strong. I didn't know that it was this strong. And that happened over and over and over again. So that's the thing is like the power of collective consciousness and prayer or thought or energy, all of that shit is real. Okay, so I told you what heaven was like, but now I'm gonna tell you what hell was like because I was in hell or purgatory. I've always had a theory that earth is purgatory and heaven and hell at the same time. I've always felt that, but I'm gonna tell you what I felt hell was. So this guy hit me up and he told me to come meet him at this church that's in this sort of like, I guess like, I don't actually don't know what the building is. So I get dressed and I'm going and my throat is so fucking tight and tickly all of a sudden and I'm like <clears throat> <clears throat> and I have my little water jug and I keep drinking water and I'm like what the fuck dude it's like I was sick all of a sudden so then I get to this place and there's somebody on the microphone on the stage but when I walked in it sounded like it was like in I couldn't tell where the voice was coming from basically and everything just felt like really surreal and gray so then I see this thing that says door one and then it says use door two so then I started walking to the right because it literally had an arrow and was like door two so I started walking to door two and it skipped right to door three and I was like what the fuck so then there was door four and then my friend came so then we circled around and we sat at the table and we sat by door one and I looked directly next to it and door two was there. The woman was literally too sp stunned to speak. So I'm sitting there like, <clears throat> <clears throat> like this intense as fuck cough out of nowhere. And he's sitting next to me and all of a sudden he gets this intense as fuck cough out of nowhere, like this tickle in his throat. And we're both just sitting across the table from each other <clears throat> like literally fucking choking it was the weirdest fucking experience and then i went home and it was gone so then when ghost girl caitlin came and i'm sitting here in my cashmere sweater and i'm totally fucking fine and then she starts shifting in her seat and she's talking about how hot it is and then she starts going <clears throat> and like choking that's when i was like oh my god this bitch is a demon <laughs> so then i kicked her out so then I don't know if it was the next day or the day after, but when I was painting in my driveway, this neighbor approaches me. I've lived here for over three years and this person has never spoken to me. And all of a sudden she has so much interest in me and she's like trying to get to know me and asking me about my beliefs and all this shit, right? So I'm like, ooh, friendly neighbor. And then all of a sudden she goes, <clears throat> oh, I have a tickle in my throat. And in my mind, I'm like, this, this bitch is about to say some whack shit because I now associate the tickle in your throat with something like negative. Like it's like a sign that I'm given. So immediately after she says she has a tickle in her throat, she starts <laughs> like shaming me and telling me basically that I need to be like nice to my neighbors. <laughs> and then my neighbors pull into their driveway and she's like, like they act like I can't see what's going on. Like they're all talking shit about me to each other and they sent her to talk to me. <laughs> So the only thing that I can really think of that I said that could be perceived as racist is on a live stream I said something about black fathers and black families, right? What I meant by that is statistically black families do have single parent homes and because of that we as a society need to fix the socioeconomic problems and inequalities because the disparities in single parent households between black versus white communities has nothing to do with melanin and everything to do with opportunities and education afforded to those in those areas i grew up in a really poor high crime neighborhood where i was one of the only white kids 
Oh, that's another thing. So I kept referring to myself as colored. I am a real big fan of words and their literal definitions. Colored, having color or colors, especially as opposed to being black, white, or neutral. So when I refer to myself as colored, I am neither black, white, or neutral. And as a Middle Eastern girl who presents as a white girl with a big nose and somewhat frizzy hair. Actually, my hair is like mega smooth right now. I've been conditioning every day. I never fit in anywhere. I definitely have been discriminated against and treated like not a white girl. My features that I get made fun of the most are my Middle Eastern features. But if everybody wants to just choose to ignore that I've been talking about white privilege on my platform literally since 2015 or 2016 before it was like a hot topic, I lost a ton of followers and subscribers for it. I didn't care. I've always used my voice and spoken up in times of crisis within the black community or when we are rallying against racism in general. I love all people and I'm fighting for equality for all people. That the last thing I want to say on this topic is that while I know I said that opportunities in education aren't afforded the same to everybody, but while they aren't presented at the same age, I want to make sure that every young Black, Asian, Indian, Mexican, any color, any race person in America at least is absolutely capable of anything that they want to do. And there isn't a single system or person that can stop you from doing exactly what you want to do. The problem, I believe, is that young people in high crime and low income areas, which are usually heavier in black people than white people, socioeconomically, it's just how it's been. It's the encouragement and the education and the examples of people who have made it that need to be demonstrated in those areas. Oh, there's nothing I want to explain more than that video with that hose because I couldn't believe that people were not seeing what was happening. I want to preface this by saying that I have used many a hose and I have used that hose many times. I know how hoses work. I know how gravity works. I know how water pressure works. I don't know much about physics, but I know enough. I was washing my car and my trash cans because they stink, whatever. And then it turned into this acute angle, full water pressure. Look at my hand, I'm not doing anything. Rises up and it's holding itself in a right angle. Have you ever seen anything like this? Look, my hand is still not moving. I'm just allowing this to do whatever it wants to do. And what happens here is along this row, I have plants that are super dry and dying in the California heat. And it literally watered my plants all the way down. It does a full fucking circle, maintaining a right angle. In what world would a rubber hose hold this type of water pressure and still maintain a right angle and then spin in a perfect fucking circle. Notice I'm still not moving. It's still holding itself in this bizarre fucking angle. So I was just letting the hose literally do what it wanted to do because I was just trying to wash my car and my trash cans and all of a sudden it's watering my grass and then all of a sudden it starts whipping and it feels like an elephant's trunk. It felt miraculous and amazing. It literally felt like an elephant was spraying me with its water from its trunk. Like it was so, I don't know how to explain it other than miraculous. And then I have all of this information downloading into my brain as this is happening because in California, people will shame the fuck out of you for watering your plants because of the drought, right? So then all of this information is being downloaded into my head about yes, water your plants, water your grass, these beautiful living pieces of earth because the water cycle, mother nature will take care of it. The water cycle is water into the earth, heat, causes condensation and evaporation, which goes up to the clouds and then causes precipitation, which is the rain. It's back in the earth. It goes back up. <sighs> Did you know, and we learned this in fourth grade, not a single drop of water on the entire earth has ever left the earth's atmosphere. The reason we're in drought is because we're hoarding the water in the droughts. We're making the drought worse by not putting our water back into the earth so it can condensate, precipitate, evaporate the water cycle. And also, as I was washing my trash cans, the information downloading was, oh, you never cared when people just threw their dog shit and their trash into your trash cans as you left them out days after trash day. I'm sure it made them so mad. But wouldn't it have been nice if one of your neighbors would have helped you out in your clear time of need?